Tonight, a special King 5 report about how Army leaders failed a Shelton veteran they had a duty to help. He went to war for our country and came back forever changed. In a five-month investigation, King 5's Taylor Mirfenderesky reveals how the safeguards in place to protect the veteran fell apart and left him broken again. One right here, this is the combat action badge. This is the uniform Cordball wore for the last 10 years in the U.S. Army. I wore it with pride. But he'll never wear it again. It is all over now. The Army kicked him out of the service, gave him a piece of paper that reduces his military career to three words, other than honorable, dismissed for misconduct. Oh, absolutely something I'm still struggling with. This 27-year-old veteran didn't commit any serious crimes. He got in trouble for getting sick. The Army broke him. His attorney, Heather Straub. Even when they had the chance to fix it, they didn't. Ball joined the Army when he was 17. A soldier so proud of his country, he re-enlisted twice. How did that feel, Blue? Blue, talk to me, Blue. The Army recognized Ball for his achievements and years of good conduct, and his performance evaluations were nearly flawless. Just look at his attitude back then about going to war. Get out of the battle focus mindset because out on the battlefield, you don't know what's going to happen. In 2011, Ball deployed to Afghanistan as an aviation operations specialist. He returned home 10 months later, a broken man. Over the next several years, Ball's life fell apart. He got panic attacks, wrestled with addiction. He tried to kill himself four times. In December 2016, it was clear Ball was too sick to keep serving. Military doctors diagnosed him with anxiety and chronic post-traumatic stress disorder. It doesn't take a diagnosis, though, to see how um, troubled he is. We, we witnessed, like, a mass slaughtering where the Taliban went in and killed, like, killed I think it was like 200 people or something like that. <sighs> um, but we couldn't do anything to stop them like, because it wasn't like our soldiers involved. And I didn't understand, that didn't make any sense to me. Um, like kids and everything, it's like women, it was everyone. But, oh. So I don't like to talk about that. Ball obviously needed help. So the Army stepped up. They put him on a track to get out of the Army with a medical discharge, and they moved him to a special unit at Joint Base Lewis McCord, where wounded service members can focus on healing. But that very unit that was supposed to show Ball compassion and special care turned out to be anything but. A King 5 analysis of more than a thousand pages of military records revealed as Ball's mental health got worse, so did his discipline records. He got in trouble for missing doctor's appointments and missing mandatory morning check-ins on base. Like I've detached myself from important things, um, not intentionally. He got in trouble for disappearing for seven days in the Army. They call that AWOL. They viewed him as a bad soldier instead of a sick soldier. And last year, Ball got in trouble again. He failed a drug test for marijuana. Kind of weighing my options at the time of whether I wanted to use cannabis or kill myself. I didn't really think of getting in trouble. Dr. April Gerlach is a former VA medical provider and a highly regarded PTSD expert. These disorders impact how they interact with people. She says for a soldier like Ball, going missing and smoking pot are textbook symptoms of PTSD. No, I'm not surprised when it happens. We expect them to contain that while they're active duty. Despite his well-documented illness, Ball's captain put a halt to his medical discharge process, stopping the path to long-term help. And instead, she decided to kick him out of the Army for misconduct, commission of a serious offense. Somebody needs to do something about that. Ball had one last shot to save his medical discharge. The military has a final process to make sure sick soldiers aren't kicked out for the wrong thing. And in that process, the Army's own doctors went out of their way to confirm Ball's medical problems caused his behavior. They said the situation was putting the soldier at risk of suicide. 
and an other than honorable discharge would cause him to lose the veteran health care benefits that could save his life. The medical providers made the right call, yes. But? But it's a command decision. Despite that medical advice, JBLM's commanding general signed off on those three words. Now, the country Ball fought for is refusing to fight for him. In Shelton, Taylor Mearfenderuski, King 5 News. So we requested an interview with Army commanders at Joint Base Lewis McCord to ask why they didn't listen to the medical experts who knew Ball the best. A spokesman declined and said in a statement that the leaders there comply with the Army's separation policies and they are confident the process is fair. Tonight, health care officials at JBLM's Madigan Hospital speak exclusively to King 5 about a system that fails to care for soldiers suffering from PTSD and other mental illnesses. As King 5's Taylor Mirfendereski reports, the Madigan employees say soldiers recovering from the mental stress of combat are seen as troublemakers. And instead of helping those soldiers, they say the Army simply chooses to get rid of them. I don't even know how to go through with this. Like. Former Staff Sergeant Cord Ball is one of thousands of veterans broken by war. But back on American soil, the U.S. Army broke him again. The powers that be at Joint Base Lewis McCord did not do right by this soldier. Ball developed mental illnesses from trauma. Instead of getting help, the Army kicked him out for breaking the rules. He racked up a long list of behaviors military doctors say he couldn't control because his medical conditions caused them. It's not about me. I'm not the only person. For the first time, Madigan Army Medical Center employees are speaking out. They say Ball's right. What happened to him is a pattern at JBLM. Commanders seeing soldiers not as sick, but as troublemakers who need to go. It's like the rats jumping out of the water. Hurry up and get them out. They are too much trouble. We agreed to conceal this Madigan official's identity because they don't have permission from the Army to talk. Over the last decade, this person has served thousands of wounded soldiers, just like Ball. Why did you decide to talk to me? The soldiers need help. American people do not know what's going on. If I was not around the soldiers, I wouldn't know. Sometimes I sit and I'm just, I'm just amazed at how bad these soldiers are treated. In Ball's case, after coming back from Afghanistan, his life fell apart. Military doctors diagnosed him with anxiety and chronic post-traumatic stress disorder because what he saw over there destroyed him. We, we witnessed like a mass slaughtering where the Taliban went in and came, like, killed, I think it was like 200 people or something like that. <sighs> um, but we couldn't do anything to stop them like, because it wasn't like our soldiers involved. And I didn't understand, that it didn't make any sense to me. Um, like kids and everything, it's like women, it was everyone. Military doctors say Ball will need medical care for the rest of his life. Instead, Army leaders gave him an other than honorable discharge, and that stripped away his right to access VA health care. And now you have a soldier that is like a man without a country. It wasn't supposed to turn out this way. The Army has processes in place, medical reviews to make sure sick soldiers with service-related illnesses don't get kicked out for the wrong reasons. So what you're saying is the Army's policies to protect these soldiers don't work? It doesn't work. Nope. Not at all. Records show Madigan medical experts repeatedly warn Ball's commanders, and other than honorable discharge would be the wrong move. What is the point of having the medical community weigh in and validate if it's not going to be taken into consideration because every one of those medical statements was totally ignored. The commanders shouldn't have that amount of power, not when there is a medical condition on the table. This official's not the only one who's seen it. A Madigan psychologist who asked not to appear on camera describes widespread frustration among behavioral health providers at the medical center because their recommendations routinely seem to be ignored. How confident are you that there are more Sergeant Balls out there? Oh, absolutely confident. There is no doubt in my mind that there are a lot more Sergeant Balls, not just here in this installation, just Army-wide. This is why we continue to lose our veterans, because now what does he have to hold on to? Nothing. The latest VA data shows that between 2008 and 2016, 
more than 6,000 veterans killed themselves each year. That's more than 55,000 veterans in that time period taking their own lives. Until we can stop the madness and help our soldiers and get them back on track, um, this is just going to continue to happen. As a soldier, Ball tried to kill himself four times. Lost a lot. Now he's out without VA medical care. And this recently shot cell phone video shows his service related demons are still with him. Don't know how. There's no way how to change it. We really feel for that veteran. He's left the state of Washington now to be near his family. And he's waiting for the VA to make a decision about whether he'll qualify for those long term health care benefits. And as for the Army, we asked officials to respond to the whistleblower's claims. A spokesperson declined our request for an interview. He told us in a statement that the Army process is fair, objective, and holistic.